I had an idea the other day. Uh, it was a bit of a kind of light bulb moment that actually started with a light bulb. And I was thinking about light bulbs, and they've kind of changed over the years, haven't they? We've gone some the nice little filaments. They've gone through different sizes and shapes, gases. We went to those weird eco-friendly ones, didn't we, a while back, and now we use LEDs. But through all of that, they've just remained a single purpose item. They just produce light. And kind of our homes are just full of single purpose little items and products. We have a speaker that makes sound and a little sensor for detecting smoke and a kettle for boiling water. In kind of evolutionary terms, these are almost like little microorganisms floating in a little pool at the dawn of life, just alone in the darkness, isolated. But life finds a way. Yes, got it in. <laughs> 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 and recently, our devices, they've started to wake up. They've become smart. And they've started to reach out into the darkness and become connected by a digital AI brain. We call this the Internet of Things. And it's going to change our digital lives and how we engage with our digital services and the products in our home forever. We're never going back. In evolutionary terms, again, we're having a kind of Cambrian explosion of life with the Internet of Things. As our dark pool spawns all these little organisms, some just a couple of sensors connected, others far more complex. But the most interesting and exciting things right now are happening inside that digital AI brain. Now, even though this is powered by some of the most advanced machine learning that we can code right now, they're still relatively basic, only just starting to understand the data that they're starting to receive. Somewhere out there, a Nest camera is trying to differentiate the difference between a human and a dog. <laughs> and definitely somewhere out there, right now, an Amazon Echo is trying in vain to understand a Geordie accent. <laughs> and failing. But soon the cameras will understand the context of what it's seeing, like we do. And those Amazon Echoes will understand Geordie accents, finally. <laughs> and those brains will get smarter. And they'll start moving beyond even our comprehension of the world. See, there's a bit of a sort of a symbiotic relationship that's happening right now with AI and the Internet of Things. One getting smarter as the other one gets more powerful, and so on and so on. So as the AI brain can start understanding more, the products realize that, hey, we can provide more data. So a camera goes from just high definition to 4K to HK to sort of 360 VR. And then suddenly there's so much data that the AI brain has to catch up, and so on and so on. And we're having this exciting boom of activity with the evolutions happening almost on a daily basis. It's really exciting, all these new innovations happening. But the products in our home have just started to do one better. And they're breaking free of that single purpose origin. And they're becoming multi-purpose. Now, we're already starting to see this happening with products starting to ship as default, as being smart. And they come with microphones and speakers. Now, this has led to a little bit of confusion as people start to wonder why there is a microphone in their thermostat, and obviously leading to the conclusion that it's a conspiracy theory by Amazon to listen in and understand us more. And even though I can't vouch that it isn't a conspiracy theory, it's probably more likely something a little bit more commercial. Because the reason is, if everything in your room can pick you up wherever you walk through your house, and you've got all these little microphones and speakers, it creates a kind of interconnectivity matrix around you. So wherever I am, I can just ask out loud, and I can connect to that digital AI brain. And this is really powerful for a few reasons. The most obvious is that with a single voice command, I can turn on lights. I can change the temperature of the room. I can play music. I can play TV shows. Or I can string whole sequences together, turning everything off in my house with one command. And that's great. But it's not just about controlling light switches, because most people here are probably thinking, well, I can just do that myself. I don't know why this big fuss is all about the Internet of Things. The real power is in connecting to the hive mind of the human race. So with a little voice command, I can suddenly ask out loud any question that could possibly come into my head. Because the human race has become more connected than ever before by the internet, and we have become smarter than ever before because we can access that. Unless you read the comments on YouTube, and then it feels like an alarming step backwards. So any moment, I can just pop off the top of my head, and I can ask, when was the Battle of Waterloo? And I'll find the answer. Or what was the name of Canadian pop-punk band Sum 41's first album? Which was all killer, no filler, if you're interested. <laughs> and what the AI won't be able to tell you is they lied. They did lie. It was a terrible album. 
But it's not just about answering any question that could possibly come into your head. It also connects us to those digital services that we're already used to using. So just from speaking out loud, I can order a taxi. And it also means that in the not too distant future, ordering a pizza off your dishwasher won't be as crazy as that originally sounds. And it's important to remember as well that we're not just doing this with us just on the outside and this whole ecosystem happening. We're baking ourselves into that internet of things with our wearable devices, providing health data, even the computers learning how we like our temperatures in different rooms. We are baking ourselves into that ecosystem. So again, as that curve goes up, we get smarter, we get more integrated, we all collectively get more powerful from it. So as I thought about our homes and these products within them, I thought, well, what would be the next step for those little organisms floating? In evolutionary terms, again, that would be probably growing a skin and a sense of touch. Now, just for our kettles and our lights, that doesn't really seem like there's going to be much benefit in that. But I thought, why don't we go one further? And we think about not just the items, but the countertops and the floors and the walls and the pipes and the walls and the radiators and the tiles. What if they all were smart? What if we could produce like a nanofilm, like graphene that coats everything, and instantly everything comes smart as default. The AI brain suddenly understanding everything that is happening in the home at once. Now, how would that AI brain interpret all of those electrical signals coming up? Would it be like how we interpret those electrical signals coming to our brain? Would it feel a soft touch as pleasurable? <laughs> or the slamming of a door as painful? Ow. If something starts to go wrong, like a pipe in the loft, Maybe it will know about that weeks in advance, like we feel aches or an achy joint. And it will alert us to it and say, you need to go and have a look at this. Something's not quite right. Maybe in time as well, it will understand the limitations of what we as the humans aside can provide for it. In my instance, being terrible at DIY, that would be pretty quickly. Maybe in time as well, it will start to self-serve. So knowing the limitations of what I can do for it, it will contact a specialist already, so one day I'll open the door to a plumber who's come to fix a pipe in the loft that I didn't even know was broken. Maybe in time as well, I won't even have to open the door. It will just happen while I'm out with the AI seeing the plumber arrive, unlocking the door, informing him of the problem, and monitoring the whole situation. And then in time again, maybe the house doesn't even need people, and it can just repair itself with micro-robots or nanobots healing the walls itself or fixing leaking pipes. And again, we're not just separate from all of this. We're not just outside watching this terrifying house moving around us. We are part of it, with our super smart wearables going now into our clothing, augmented reality glasses, or even contact lenses. We'll be able to see this digital layer around us and interact with it with gestures and touch. Or with brain-machine interfacing, being able to do all of that, but with our mind. And again, connecting to that hive mind, not asking a question out loud, but simply knowing that the Battle of Waterloo was the 15th of June, 1815, and that Sum 41's album was all killer, no filler. And that they did lie, they did lie. <laughs> it's important to remember that. <laughs> and like that pipe in the loft that was starting to burst, maybe it too will look after us as the inhabitants of the house, making sure we're fed and cared for, monitoring our medical data, making sure we are mentally active and socially active. Less big brother, more big mother. And this is going to take a lot of power to run a house like this. So maybe the house itself generates its own power. Maybe these smart surfaces can also draw power from light and heat. Maybe through football or through the water coursing through those pipes, generating it to actually create a zero emission home that we can live in. And as I looked at this home, I thought, this doesn't actually have to be the end of this story. So this isn't the end of it at all. What if this was the start of it? What if this is actually a blueprint for growth? And like those Internet of Things items that started reaching out to the darkness, maybe our homes, too, could reach out to the darkness and start connecting together to create a smart neighborhood or street. Put all in together their security systems to create one surveillance system that can monitor the street. Or maybe extending that smart material out to curb traffic by connecting to the car's internal AIs. We build microgrids of power to self-sustain our little communities, no longer requiring on a national grid, but able to grow and monitor ourselves. But all of this will just be a first step. This will just be a vein in a bigger organism. And human beings will be as blood coursing through the veins of the Colossus as we move to super smart cities.
We've already seen the emergence of smart cities, but built from super smart homes up, we could see the dawn of a new type of civilization. Traffic will be calmed and monitored, the roads powering the cars as well as drawing energy themselves. Waste and water and flooding will all be taken care of. And if we can build zero emission homes and zero emission neighborhoods, maybe this is how we lead to purely zero emission cities. And if we have zero emission cities, maybe that would lead to unprecedented growth, leading to interconnected mega cities. And from there, we could just move to smart countries, where the AI, now being proven that it can look after us and care for us in our homes, our neighborhoods, our cities, our mega cities, now it's caring for economies and electricity distribution and farming, freight, and human locomotion. And if we can do a smart country, then why not move to a smart world? What would a world feel like under the rule of an AI? Would we abandon wealth in the face of no longer needing to worry about the future because we are cared for and provided for as default? What would happen to religion in the face of an entity that is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, and you can engage with while brushing your teeth and get answers to the biggest questions you could think of as to why things are happening in the world instantly? What would happen to government and politics? Would we need them anymore? No longer requiring on people and petty biases and arguments and politicians' own agendas, but actually now just farming off our thinking to a higher power. You could just keep going and going, couldn't you? Just keep going and going. Let's keep going and going. Smart solar systems. <laughs> Where the AI now is mining planets and asteroids to create Dyson spheres to power the energies of an AI that needs enormous computational power, but can, is now so smart that it can understand the physics to build wormholes between planets. And as I sat there thinking about this, I thought maybe this is actually the only way we can grow as a species and keep growing and keep growing. The power of that AI, doing everything that we could possibly imagine, understanding the world at a nanoparticle level, transforming like rubbish into food and plastic into pure water. And as I thought about this crazy idea, and as I thought about us exploring our own solar system and finally breaking free, and going off into the galaxy and doing all the things we've seen in movies and read in books and comics and talked about and got excited about, exploring those planets and civilizations. I had to remind myself that ultimately, this really was just an idea I had. It was a light bulb moment that started with a light bulb. Thanks. <laughs>